All right, so on the unit circle table, I'm gonna give you about five minutes and I want you to fill in the radians in here and then the ordered pairs around the outside of the circle without you know, trying to get it from your brain, not just copying it from something else, and then um, stop and wait until we go further. If you're watching the video, you're gonna need to pause it because I'm not gonna just let it run for five minutes. Okay, so check yourself with me if you haven't already. Hopefully, as, as you fill out the entire circle, it gets a little bit easier to kind of double check yourself along the way and you feel like you don't necessarily have to, you know, because it's like a puzzle and all the little pieces fit together. Um, but just make sure that you're right. And um, so now we're gonna together put the tangent values around the circle because those are still a little, a little fresh and we'll box them. So if I'm at zero or two pi, what is the tangent of zero? Zero, okay, good. And then also at pi over here, tangent is also zero. So it's the same on either end there. If I'm at pi halves, what is the tangent value? Undefined, good. So it's undefined at pi halves and down here at three pi halves. All right, so then I would say, and again, kind of a matter of opinion, but probably the next easiest tangent value would be the pi fourths angles, and that's what? One, good. All right, so then when I go to the pi fourths angle in quadrant two, in quadrant two, is tangent positive or negative? Remember, all students take calculus. So in the second quadrant, tangent is negative, so this is gonna be a negative one. In the third quadrant, tangent is positive, so that pi fourths is one. And then it's negative again in the fourth quadrant, so this is a negative one. Okay. The remaining tangent values are full of threes. The pi thirds angles are just square root of three. The pi sixths angles have two threes in them, so it's the square root of three over three. Then we just reflect those along. In the second quadrant, it's negative, so the pi thirds is negative square root of three. The pi sixth angle, negative square root of three over three. Third quadrant, tangent's positive, so the pi sixth angle, square root of three over three. Pi thirds angle is just the square root of three. Fourth quadrant, we're negative again, so pi thirds is negative square root of three, and pi sixth is negative square root of three over three. Okay. So those values, hopefully you have them solidified in your brain. Now, one nice thing about taking notes in Kami is that you can change colors. Some of you still choose not to, and that's fine, I don't care. I change colors a lot of times just so you don't lose me when I'm writing, but I feel like in this, it kind of separates things, that's nice too. I really don't care, I'm not like judging it for colorfulness or whatever, but in the um, chart down at the bottom we do this, I do want you to pick two colors. I don't care what colors they are, but we're gonna do one thing in one color and something else in another color. And if you're taking them on paper, it's fine if all you have is a pencil. I mean, it's, it's all good. I'm just trying to kind of separate some things out for you. All right, so let's look down here because this is just a different way to organize all the information and a different way to look at it. We are gonna start with what we already know and we're comfortable with, and that is sine, cosine, and tangent. And pick a color, I'm picking blue, but it doesn't matter, just we're gonna use one color for all three columns, for all three of those columns. And um, so the sign, and try and do this without looking at the circle at the top. I mean, if you absolutely have to, that's fine, but let's try and get these out of our own little brains here. So what is the sign of zero? Zero, right, good. And what is the sign of pi halves? One. And then the sine of pi is zero, and the sine of three pi halves is negative one, okay? And then sine of pi sixths, what's that? One half, good. The sine of pi fourths, square root of two over two, 
and then sine of pi thirds squared of 3 over 2, right? All right, so then go ahead and fill out the cosine and tangent columns, same color. So like all three of these columns I have are going to be blue. So go ahead and fill out the cosine and the tangent on your own. And then once you get those filled in, that's when you're going to switch colors, okay? But before we start filling anything else out, let's look at what we have. If you remember when I gave you the unit circle reference, one of the things I wanted you to notice was that for these three special angles, your sine and cosine values were all over 2. Like you didn't have another choice. It's all over 2. Tangent's a different story. But sine and cosine, it's all over 2. None of the reciprocals are going to have a 2 in the denominator. So those are the only ones that have 2s in the denominator, right? So then our cosecant, secant, and cotangent are reciprocals of what we already know. So just like if I'm asking you for a, a second or third quadrant angle, you figure out, or value, you figure out if it's positive or negative, but you relate it all back to your first quadrant values and use those. To figure out your reciprocals, so like if I ask you for the cosecant of something, you're going to tie it back to not only the first quadrant, but the first quadrant sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, I say that, I don't really care how you do it, and I understand that everybody's brain works differently, but for the great majority of you, that's the thought process that's going to work best for you. Other people, like I said, maybe you can just memorize the whole thing, or who knows what's going through your mind, and that's all fine and great, but the, for the majority of people, that's not always going to work, whatever you're doing, and that's fine. So let's talk, so I've changed colors. I'm going to use red for the rest of the chart. So let's look at cosecant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So if I take zero and I put one over zero, what does that give me? Undefined, because you don't get to divide by zero. So the reciprocal of zero is undefined. What is the reciprocal of one? It's an easy question. It's not a trick question. It's one, yeah. Then the reciprocal of zero, again, is undefined. What's the reciprocal of negative one? Negative one, yeah. It's the easiest ones that stump us sometimes. All right, what is the reciprocal of one half? Two. What is the reciprocal of square root of two over two? Does anybody just know? It's 2 squared of 2 over 2, which reduces to square root of 2. Yeah, okay. So let's just do that real quick. So I'm going to find the reciprocal of square root of 2 over 2. So that's, oof, hello, hello, okay. 2 over the square root of 2. So if I rationalize, that becomes 2 square roots of 2 over 2. Those cancel out, so it's just the square root of 2. Okay, kind of like I kind of expect for you to know that the reciprocal of the square root of 2 is square root of 2 over 2, so it's vice versa on that. All right, so that means, oof, scroll back down. This reciprocal here is just square root of 2. So it works out nicely when these values are the same, the value under the square root and then the one in the denominator, because these two things I want you to connect together. So instead of connecting, you know, the square root of 2 necessarily to pi fourths or to cosecant or whatever, if you tie these two together, that's what's going to be the easiest for you, which prompted me to think last period what I should have done, and I haven't done yet, but I will, is to make a set of those flashcards that just have reciprocal values on them so you can tie those together quickly and you're not overthinking things. Now, this one, not quite as simple because the 3 and the 2 are different. So let's talk about what happens there. The reciprocal of the square root of 3 over 2 would be 2 over the square root of 3. So when I rationalize that, that becomes 2 square roots of 3 over 3. 
And that one I don't get to reduce. So that's it. So the reciprocal of the square root, oh, goodness, of the square root of 3 over 2 is 2 square roots of 3 over 3. So to me, this is the only kind of weird one. The rest of them I think are pretty, you know, makes sense, but that one might look a little off, off the wall for you. But notice it's not divided by 2 because the only over 2s are sine and cosine. Those are the only ones that have 2 in the denominator. So now we move on to secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. Reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Reciprocal of negative 1 is negative 1. And the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Then the reciprocal of the square root of 3 over 2 is 2 square roots of 3 over 3. The reciprocal of the square root of 2 over 2 is the square root of 2. And the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Okay. So looking just at, well, first of all, if you, even if we just look at the blue numbers first, it's a finite set of stuff you can have. And then you look at what we have so far in the red, Really, the only three new th new things you have are these three numbers here. So it's a very finite set of stuff, meaning you're not going to have any square roots of 5 in here, nothing like that. Like There's only so many things it could be. All right, so then when we look at cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. So the reciprocal of 0 is undefined. Now, mathematically, the reciprocal of undefined is undefined, because if you can't define it, you can't find the reciprocal of it. However, if you look purely at what cotangent is, it's x over y. The way I get this right here to get undefined, I put 1 over 0. So if here I put 0 over 1, my answer would actually be 0. So these are tied together, and that should make sense. I just want you to understand that officially, mathematically, it's not the reciprocal of undefined. Okay. And then reciprocal of 0 is undefined. The reciprocal of the tangent of 3 pi halves is 0, not the reciprocal of undefined. Then what is the reciprocal of the square root of 3 over 3? Square root of 3. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. The reciprocal of the square root of 3 is square root of 3 over 3. So those just switch places. So I wanted you to have this chart so you can just kind of see how it all works together. But as long as you can tie the reciprocals to each other, and you know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and so forth, like you have to know a few things, but you'll be able to come up with these values pretty simply. So today's practice in Delta Math is purely quadrant one of secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So that means here's how you can think through this. If I go back up here and I say, all right, what is the secant of pi thirds? So in your mind, you should get, okay, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I know that the cosine of pi thirds is 1 half, so the secant is 2. And if I ask you for the uh, secant of pi sixths, all right, so again, secant is cosine. Cosine of pi six is the square root of 3 over 2, but I want the reciprocal, and that's 2 square roots of 3 over 3. So it's like just stepping through a couple of steps of thought and not you having to know a whole new set of stuff, okay? Just you being able to tie the reciprocals together, and you'll be good to go, all right? Any questions at all? All right. So this is for you to kind of look at and study. And for some people, the chart, like you'll just see the chart, and you'll be able to see the chart in your mind. That's not going to work for everybody. But whatever works for you is great. So I want you to practice... The flashcards are in there for secant, cosecant, cotangent, quadrant one. I will put this just straight up reciprocal ones in there and um, for you to practice on. And then tomorrow when we play games, it's going to be just straight up what's the reciprocal of one half and what's the reciprocal of square root of two, that sort of thing. And then also your first quadrant values for secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So come back if you want to play games with us at the beginning to review. That would be good for you um, if you're on Zoom right now. Any questions at all? Awesome.